Hi everybody, Karen Roby here with Tech Republic. We're talking today with independent digital analyst and futurist Brian Solis. And uh, we're talking, Brian, uh, today kind of about some of the, the shifts and trends that are shaping digital transformation. And Brian, I know you talk about this a lot and you, uh, you know, speak with CIOs and other leaders, business leaders uh, so often. What are some of the things that uh, as of late that you've been hearing, seeing, what are some of the things that you want people to know that are in those roles? For example, every year I, I, I published, and, and I might retire it this year, the state of digital transformation uh, for the last five years. And essentially what that research has shown is sort of this eventual but certainly sluggish migration uh, from the digital transformation of, so for example, uh, cloud, uh, customer uh, support, um, what have you, to a more enterprise-wide uh, cross-functional digital transformation, which is essentially saying, uh, in other words, business optimization, business modernization, or change management. Because what, what the underlying force is behind, or at least the underlying opportunity behind digital transformation is, is that this is an opportunity for the entire organization to not just modernize how it works on the inside or the back office, but also how it functions, how it feels, how it resonates with the front office, the market, the customer, the employee. So the digital in this is really about innovation. Uh, and so some of the things that I'm not seeing uh, are that prioritization or that sense of urgency around digital transformation to essentially make businesses more relevant, more modern, and more promising and, and ultimately profitable uh, in, in, a, in a modern economy. Well, and Brian, yeah, that's interesting. And it seems, you know, we do a lot of articles and talk about this a lot when it comes to uh, digital transformation, let's say, you know, in a, in a company so often, it used to be that IT was just kind of stuck out here. You know, it was this department uh, that was, was over off in this way. And now so much IT is just part of the organization. It has to be there uh, with the leaders of a business. Are you finding that it's, it is more integrated or is it still, there are still companies that just kind of, still treat this as a, as a separate thing? Well, there's, it's all of the above. Uh, I think if I could add any, any value to the conversation, it would be this, is that of course you have to manage infrastructure. Of course you have to modernize infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, this is an opportunity to reimagine that infrastructure, not just from an agile mindset or an, uh, how we work or through DevOps, et cetera, but to look at why we're doing something. So this, this is IT splitting into two, which is not a new conversation, which is management, but also towards innovation. So essentially partnering with the rest of the organization from a business standpoint to understand their goals, understand the larger organizational goals, and then make the technology investments and all of the apps and services necessary for those to run uh, in an optimal way to help enable those goals. So essentially you're adding more value and of course more pressure, but more value to the IT organization as a whole. So the CIO role or whatever it, it emerges to be, whether it's innovation, digital, uh, it, it becomes much more of an enablement uh, solution to help the business use technology in ways that are gonna help it operate, not just at scale, but faster for an on-demand economy, for a connected customer, for a connected employee, uh, at the speed, essentially, of how everything's evolving. And, and if you talk to somebody, let's say uh, you had a CEO come to you, Brian, and say, you know, we're just not evolving like we're, we should be or we're supposed to be evolving, uh, you know, what would be the top couple of things that you would pass on, uh, tips or just uh, some, some information, you know, something to keep in mind that would help get them kind of over the hump? As that old saying, uh, I think it's Stephen Covey, start with the end in mind. I think a lot of times leadership gets itself in, in its own way because it's bringing to that question that you just asked a whole bunch of legacy, a whole bunch of uh, cognitive biases, uh, and essentially a whole bunch of experiences that are kind of working against us right now. So what that end in mind looks like, and this is where I see digital transformation completely thrive, is let's not just talk about cloud or mobile or conversational interfaces or AI or chatbots. Let's look at how the customer is changing, what their expectations are, what their behaviors are, what they look at as sort of the ideal standard for 
engagement experiences, customer experiences, uh, and, and reverse engineer that. So we're giving all of those investments a sense of purpose. So for example, we, we could look at what customers expect, what they love, what they're doing, and see all kinds of gaps that we're missing today. And we can fill those gaps. And then we can also study the market innovators and see where we're also missing opportunities and we can prioritize those in terms of a roadmap. So it's essentially IT and business groups coming together for a much more cross-functional digital transformation. So cloud, mobile, DevOps, all of those things, hugely urgent, but we just give it a sense of direction and purpose. And by the way, that's, that's just one of the ways I'd answer the question. We can also look at the employee experience as well as they become more connected, more distracted so that we can help them be more productive and, and, work with more purpose. Very good. And, and how much, Brian, do you find that when you do talk to, uh, say, business owners or uh, you know any other company leaders, how concerned are they? How much are they vocalizing their um, concern with security and privacy? Obviously, it's just, it's in our face all of the time, you know, that security concerns and, and doing what needs to be done to keep a company safe. And sometimes that's not even enough. How much are they talking about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question because there are two two answers to it. One is, if you're regulated, you're talking about it quite a bit. If you're not, it's almost like an uh oh moment. You know, I talk about changes, uh, the aha, like we need to do this. What if? Uh, and then uh oh, we just we just had a breach, uh, and now, now we need to do this. Uh, and and oftentimes it's the latter. Uh, so I do think if we're looking at it from the customer perspective, and privacy and security are paramount to them, and if any event happens, we're going to see this type of churn or this type of loss in brand engagement or loyalty or conversions or sales, however you want to put a metric or a series of metrics to it, we could change the conversation much more proactively because <clears throat> it's certainly not that way now. It's just sort of a checkbox. But I think the underlying foundation for what it takes to breach or what it takes to have that event is easy across multiple fronts. And so it just becomes part of the, the sense of urgency around digital transformation that we have to pay attention to, part of a series of, of boxes, by the way. All right, and Brian, you know, obviously we talk about digital transformation. It's a, you know, a, a huge subject and there's so many different avenues, different things we could talk about within uh, you know, digital transformation. Where do you see a year from now? Where do you see our conversation? Uh, what will it center around, do you think? <laughs> I think it's going to center around uh, new new operational models within the organization. So I don't know how sexy that is, but I tell you that's exactly what we need to work differently, right? So the, the infamous silos that we've talked about in enterprise for forever uh, have to break down. And the only way they're going to break down is if we can force create new models. I'll give you an example. Uh, in a year from now, we'll probably see much more uh, data centered models that where marketing and growth and customer experience are actually now sitting together as part of one, one function they might report up to a different type of role, whether it's still the same as CDO or CMO or CGO for growth. We're gonna to start to see these models start to emerge in order to make much more real time and even predictive analytics uh, operationalized uh, across the customer experience, across the customer journey, and even eventually in the employee journey. But that's, I think that's where we'll really start to see the conversation a year from now, still around growth and then force optimization and force, force modeling around that growth. All right, very good. Well, we certainly plan on having more uh, conversations with you, Ryan, uh, here in the future, and that will be definitely what we're turning to. So we thank you for your time today. And if you want to learn more on uh, digital transformation in general, make sure you check out uh, Tech Republic. Thanks for watching.